everyone, and welcome to the Dice Roll, the queerest Pathfinder podcast on the planet, where we start questions like, can a naga do unarmed attacks? Mm. So, here's the thing. I did, while I was doing my research for Ruby Phoenix, uh-huh. I uncovered that there is a nation in Tiansha called Nagajor. Okay. And in Nagajor, it is run by naga, who are basically giant snakes with human heads, right? Yeah. And apparently, they do a lot of martial arts there. Uh-huh. My question is, how the fuck? With how the tail, fuck? With their tail, they, they take their tail and they slap you. Smack. Smack him. Okay. They also do have arms. No, they don't. They literally do not. Wait, Pathfinder Nagas don't have arms? No, they're just a giant snake with a oh, human head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's their thing. There's another uh, species, I think, that is more like the idea of a Naga that you're thinking of. Huh. But this one is... Yeah, this one don't have arms. So while technically all their attacks are unarmed, have, I just can't picture it. How This tail slap is a little silly. And if you just bite. bite someone... But that's just biting. There's only one way you can bite someone. Breath attack. They don't have those. They could. New heart Oh, question. they they, they um, swallow they swallow some like uh, hard like metal pellets and they spit them back out at you. I fucking love that image, and I'm just gonna accept that as canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, would we like to play some Pathfinder, everyone? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, previously, in Fists of the Ruby Phoenix, our party came across a band of traveling enforcers, one of which was Gumwai, previous challenger of the Ruby Phoenix tournament, and criminal scum. He has left his ways behind and apologized profusely to uh, those he, who knew him. And on top of that, checked in with Masami about their father, Hiroshi, an old accomplice of his. The party continued traveling and came across the Heralds of Hongao, a band of horse-riding fighters from the far north of Tiansha. You made quick work of them before moving on to greater targets, including the shrine of a long-forgotten god of the Tomaton Empire, after which you found a giant mausoleum, and within you found a new team, the Grave Treaders, and there's like a cracker of thunder. Um... A band of mercenaries from the land of Ustala, far to the west, the home of vampires, werewolves, and ghouls. The Grave Treaders have challenged you to a battle, and a battle is what you shall have. And for context, uh, these guys, their first, uh, the first game I ever ran for us as a party uh, was in Ustalav, <laughs> so everyone is very excited to meet these losers. <laughs> I love Ustalav, They're and I love losers. the dumbass idiots who live in Ustalav. <laughs> I, I think, them. Derek, you should be nicer to them. <laughs> I'm being plenty nice to them. I'm being realistic about what they can accomplish. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. Um, are we ready to play some Pathfinder? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, you're all standing in uh, the middle of a mausoleum. Two enforcers stand to the north, one of whom is Hikari, watching you all as you stand in a big open area, fists at the ready. Masami Takahara, Shi Chuji, and Senku, Witch Prince of the Sea, you come up against Gruntrak and a Rugaru, not a werewolf. Razilier, the Dampir, not a vampire. Belindra, <laughs> the Changeling, not a hag. And Raps, a real ass mummy. <laughs> <laughs> Gruntrak kind of cracks his neck a little bit to the side, says, I hope you're ready for a real challenge. What you've seen so far is nothing compared to what we've got in store for you. Okay. Oh, uh, love Rosi- to see it. Rosilia spins his staff and says, Wait until I show you my fabled spell punch ability. Ooh. Yeah, and, you uh, can punch the spell. Yes, wait till you see it. I just do it normally. <laughs> and uh, Belindra tosses her hair and says, Indeed, when we are done with you, we'll take your one feather and leave a curse on you that you won't soon forget. <laughs> and uh, Rap says, because he's still <laughs> shuffling towards you all. Oh god, he's coming towards us. He does say uh, that. Hikari says, Radiant Winds, are you ready? Yep. Ready. Uh, and the other uh, enforcer says, Grave Treaders! And there's a crack of thunder and everyone looks around. Are you ready? And uh, Rosilia says, Yes, indeed! Grave Treaders! Crack of thunder. To victory! 
and everyone. Every time. Every fucking time. <laughs> Let's roll initiative, everyone. <laughs> Ooh, we got a 27. 28. Okay. So, <clears throat> battle begin. Uh, Gruntrak is first. Uh, Daruguru, uh-huh. which isn't a werewolf, they just always look like one, uh, is going to rush forward directly for you, Masami. And uh, he lets out a roar as he brings down a longsword on you. Whatcha? And uh, that is going to be a one action to move and one action to roll a 30 to hit against you. Nope. Okay, he misses, snarls, and says, Hi-yah! and he swings again. And uh, this second attack is going to be another 30 to hit. No. <laughs> okay, Masami, you dodge twice as uh, Gruntrek rushes up to you, snarling as he fights. And uh, that is going to be his turn. Next in the order is the wicked vampire, not vampire, wizard, Rabzillier. He raises a hand and he says, I cast Disintegrate! And a beam of green light is going to fly out of his uh, evil vampire-looking staff at you, Chuji. Uh, he is going to make an attack roll against you first mm-hmm. off. So that is going to be right. a plus 24. Uh, 38 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. Okay. Have you entered a stance, by the way? Uh, oh, no, I have not. Yeah, you've got stance of on. You can enter one for free when you roll a mission. I, can... I don't think that would save you from uh, if you went into a great stance, but just so you are aware. No, it wouldn't. So I'm not going to bother. Yeah. So now you need to make me a fortitude save. All right. Uh, how's that? 30. Uh, 30 is going to be a success just about. He passes DC. Meaning you're going to take half damage uh, from this beam of green evil energy. And that is going to be half of 72 damage. Holy shit, you are very lucky. <gasps> uh, so that is going to be uh, 36 damage as a beam of green energy explodes from his staff. And he says, Haha, come closer if you will, he says, running deeper to the mausoleum. <laughs> uh, and that is going to be his turn. Uh, Sanku, Witch Prince of the Sea, it is your turn. Um, Gruntrek the Ruguru has rushed up to Masami, uh, and, uh, Ravzilier has ran away. Uh, but Raps and Galindra are both where they started at, uh, their starting place. You have three actions, what do you do? Oh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do you a rare one. I'm gonna cast a, a fire spell, um, a fire damage spell. Um, I'm gonna cast Ignite Fireworks. Uh, so tell me about Ignite Fireworks. How does this work? It's fireworks that uh, do fire and sonic damage to creatures of a 10-foot okay. burst, and they need to, t- uh, I need a reflex save, and I'm doing it right over Belindra and that mummy guy. Okay, so uh, they're booking into me to make a reflex save uh, as sparkling fireworks explode out of your stuff, and oh no! Okay, uh- well... Raps's crit failed. Hell yes. Okay, uh, which is going to be very interesting. Um, meanwhile, our friend Belindra uh, just fails. So roll me that damage. Okay. That is 15 damage. Okay. Belindra is going to take 15 damage. And Raps, uh, well, Sanku, you blast a... Uh, like sparkle of fireworks into these guys and there's mm-hmm. an explosion and uh like sparkles and whizzes and pew 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 uh explode from them all and you see um Belindra kind of stumbling back to, ah oh that's her Raps no and you see Raps has been set on fire <laughs> and Raps starts to howl in pain <laughs> because Raps is a mummy and fellas you'll be so happy to know mummies do not like fire. Oh, thank God. I was hoping logic would work here. <laughs> they are so flammable. So that is actually going to be uh, 30 plus 15. That's 45 fire damage. And also he's set on fire. Actually, I have a question. Yeah? So the Ignite Fireworks, this is the heightened version of it because I'm doing it at level... Yeah, it'll automatically be heightened, yes. It says that on the fire damage a creature takes on a critical fail is increased by 1d4. Yeah, so it'll be, uh, what level did you cast that? Four. And what level is it normally? It's a, it's a level two spell. Okay, so that means that uh, he's going to take 2d4 persistent fire damage plus 15 every time because he is weak to fire. I love being right. Uh, so he roars out in pain, and you can see that he's literally just being burnt up, right? 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you see the others panicking like, No! We're not supposed to get him on fire! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, you have one action left, Saiku. What do you do? If I casted Elemental Betrayal now, I... Is that You would uh, retroactively boost up their damage. No, 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 no. But you would have it ready for next time, yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, okay, then I'm going to do that. Okay. So, thank you. You start waving uh, your staff around, and uh, who are you pointing it at? Um, I think I'm going to cast it at Belindra because I attacked her before. Okay. So, Belindra will take extra fire damage from you now. Or is it fire? What what element are you targeting them with? Water. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a water one. Got it. Uh, well, it is Belindra's turn, and uh, she gasps, and she turns and points and says, Look what you've done! You've set our good mummy on fire! Um, and she is going to run up to you, Sanku. Oh. And uh, she's got her claws out, and uh, she is actually going to slash at you with her claw. Cool. And uh, that is going to be a 25 to hit, Sanku. No. Okay. She misses and snarls and says, Ugh! How ungrateful! And she swings again with her other claw. And that is going to be a 30 to hit, Sanku. That hits. Okay, uh, this, she brings her claws down on you, and that is going to be 16 slashing damage, Sanku, as she slash, slash. Ow. Yeah, it's not so nice, huh? No, whatever. <laughs> Masami, it's your turn. There is a Rugeru in front of you. Yeah, the, he, he certainly is in my face. <laughs> Um, do I have my spell strike active? No. Oh, you would have spell strike active at the start oh. of the fight, yes. Sick. All right. Then, uh, they are going to go for that, uh, immediately. Okay. Against Grunt Track? Yes. Awesome. And what are you casting? Uh, they're going to cast Electric Arc. Okay, so hit him. Target the man first. There we go. 37. 37 is a nice, solid hit. Roll me that uh, attack damage, and then roll me free electric arc damage. Okay, so damage from the sword is 15, and spellcasting damage... 20. Okay, so that's going to be 35 damage total as you, like, uh, slash into him, and as you do, electricity jolts out of your sword, and Grunshark has a... That wasn't nice at all, he says, frowning. (laughs) Who said in the fight I had to be nice? Uh, then last action, they're going to go into Arcane Cascade. Okay. Masami, you, uh, as you kind of, like, uh, let the magical energy flow through you, your shadows start to giggle and shortle at Grunt Track, which makes him feel quite insecure. Hmm. Uh, and you are now going to get boosted damage. Is that your turn? That is their turn. Okay, Chuji, it is your turn. Uh, you are already in Stoke Flame Stance, ready to kick some ass. Grunt Track is right here in front of you. Uh, Belindra is down there fighting Sanku, but Raps the Mummy is on fire, and also Revzilia is there, but he's off in the background being an ass. That's true. We don't want to touch the Mummy. <laughs> uh, well, it's more that you don't want the Mummy to touch you. Well, okay. He's gonna come over mummy... to you one way or another sooner or later, though. Yeah, the Mummy will touch me if I put my fist in its face. Um, that's what I'm saying. So, I'm not gonna touch the Mummy. I think I'll just let it burn to death and not go near it. Okay. Um, oh, Juju can reach him in a single action. Who? Uh, Revzilia. Revzilia's really far from you, are you sure? Yeah, my speed is 50. Oh my god, Stoke Flame Stance increases your speed! Okay, Juju, you fucking <laughs> yeah. zip through this mausoleum directly towards Revzilia. He's like, oh god! Hi! You have two actions, what do you do? Uh, Flurry of Blows. Okay, go for it. Make that attack roll. 37 and 23. Okay, a 23 is a miss, a 37 is a hit. Roll damage. Alright, that's 22 damage. Okay, you punch him hard and he lets it out as you hit him. Uh, And you have one action left, what do you do? Mm. There's Punch again. At a minus 10, I guess. Oh, fuck it, right? Fuck it, 26? A 26 is not a hit, but it's not a crit fail. In fact, it nearly was a hit, so fair play to you. Uh, Fuck, he, all right. 
Your a strike goes right for his head, he blocks with his staff, says, Not so fast, monk! Watch my spell punch attack! And he starts charging up a spell punch, you guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's Raps' <laughs> turn. And Raps lets it a... Uh, and you see him do the most terrifying thing he possibly could. He ducks his head low, and then he screams and sand billows out of him from every angle. And he uses Sandstorm! A 30-foot emanation sandstorm appears around him, which catches literally everyone in the mausoleum. Oh, fuck. In- wait, like, including Including his others? allies, who were me like, <laughs> Rats, no! You're not supposed to catch us in your sandstorm! Oh, God! <laughs> so, everyone is going to need to start making fortitude saves at the end of their turns, uh, which is fucking great. That takes three actions, so that's the end of his turn. He literally just screams. He then uh, is going to take... 18 more fire damage just by standing there. Um, And he has failed his check to uh, not be on fire. So, uh, next in the order is Gruntrak. Gruntrak's like, (laughs) Raps, no! Um, He's going to make the foolish action of uh, stepping out of the sandstorm. (laughs) (laughs) That will trigger an attack of opportunity. (laughs) It sure does. Uh, so get as fast as he's running. 36. 36 is another solid hit. As he's dashing out of the sandstorm, you smack him in the chest. Roll damage. 19. Okay, and some of that is electricity damage from your arcane cascade. Mm -hmm. He lets it up. (laughs) Stumbling a little bit. Didn't like that at all. Uh, (laughs) But he then turns to you and says, I'll show you what I've got. And uh, he is then going to just swing his sword at you a couple of times, I guess. All right. That's what he's got. <laughs> I, his sword. I, you know what? You know what? Valid. 37 to hit. That hits. Okay. Uh, that is going to be 17 slashing damage. All right. And he swings again. Ooh, hits again. Another 37. Uh, meaning that he's going to do an additional 22 for a total of 39 damage this turn. All right. All right. Yikes. That being said, Gruntrak looks like he's pretty injured. He's not holding up too well. Hmm. Uh, he's not going to take damage from the Sandstorm, though. You know who will? Rosilia, because he's not leaving. No. <laughs> he ignores everything, and he says, You've forced me to do something I don't want to do! Unleashing Spell Punch! And he punches you, Chuji. Um. And that is a 34 to hit. <sighs> Hits. <laughs> He's going to... He casts Vampiric Exsanguination on you. Does that work on another Domper? Oh my fucking god, this guy's the dumbest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> yeah? Chuji, you are healed for <laughs> 25 HP. Oh my god. He does Chuji. just, like, damage you with his punch. So it's more like, um... I... <laughs> Okay. Let's see how much damage he does with his punch real fast. Okay, so you take 14 damage and then immediately <laughs> heal that back up. <laughs> he gives you, like, a shoulder punch and <laughs> he gives you, like, the bro fucking shoulder punch. It's a little hard. Oh <laughs> like... my god. <laughs> and he looks think... at you just dumbfounded. I think Chuji literally just starts laughing in his face. <laughs> They're like... <laughs> I'M FUCKING UNDEAD! WE'RE BOTH UNDEAD! <laughs> Screw you, we're not technically undead, he says. He we fist again. bumped over it! He actually, no, I think that is his entire turn. <laughs> oh my god, this dumb shit. Uh, he is going to take damage from the sandstorm. Or wait, will he? 2d6 negative damage. Oh wait, no he doesn't. And then 1d6 slashing damage, because, oh wait, yes he does. <laughs> So he's going to take... Okay, so he heals 10 HP and loses one. So okay. it, it's a net of one damage. <laughs> because he took 11 damage. And he's standing there being like... Nyeh! And that's his turn. <laughs> um, okay. Next in order is going to be Sanku with Prince of the Sea. Oh god! You... Ow. Sandstorm. Ow. I leave what the sandstorm. Oh, you leave the sandstorm? 
Yeah, I leave the sandstorm. Okay, you leave the sandstorm. You back up deeper into the mausoleum, away from the sandstorm. I'm going to cast... Uh, I'll cast Spout on Belindra. Okay. All right. So what does Belindra have to roll? Uh, I need a reflex save. Okay. Uh, well, Belindra, let's see. That is going to be... Uh, that is going to be a success. So she will take half damage, but you have elemental betrayal up, meaning you will do extra damage anyway. Uh, okay, so that's 28. Okay. So it'd be 14. 14 damage. Uh, but then, because mm-hmm. you have your elemental betrayal up on her... Uh, that is going to do... So that's going to be 7 uh, extra water damage, meaning that uh, instead of uh, 14, it's going to be back up to 21, which I think is a nice, nice middle ground. Uh, you can see that Belindra is being knocked around pretty hard. She is hurt. She doesn't like this. She snarls and says, ah, You stupid little boy, I'll, I'll show you who's boss. Hey! Uh, and as your turn... Damn! Don't worry, Sanku, you're not that little. Why are you not saying I'm not stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Lolo, oh, goddamn. You really are her Filipino more. grandpa. Uh, um, next, so uh, next in the order is Belindra. And uh, Belindra snarls and uh, she is going to uh, point at you, Sanku, and say, I'll show you Acid Arrow! And uh, from her hand, a big ol' arrow made of acid erupts out, and she's shooting it directly at you. That is going to be a, a 26 to hit. It misses. Not it even. flies right past you, thank you. And she's like, oh, fiddlesticks. Um, <laughs> and she's actually also going to leave the sandstorm. So she's out now. Uh, and she's beside you. She's panting. She's heaving. She's like, oh, screw you. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Masami! Wait, um... Oh, Derry, um... Do I still need to... Uh, because I, I was gonna continue to do Elemental Betrayal. Can I use Cackle for that? Or do I need to, Oh, like... that's right! Yes, okay, so you don't have the actions to continue sustaining Elemental Betrayal. However, you do have a focus spell, Sanku. Cackle! Which lets you sustain the spell for free. Can you tell me what this mm-hmm. is like for Sanku? Um... He giggles. <laughs> Uh, I didn't like the the idea of Cackle being like an evil Cackle, so it's like, and what if he giggled and it was cute? Um, so he okay. giggles and it's cute. Um, Thank you. You giggle, it's cute. Little sparkles come off of you, and uh, you're, that's even though you're not waving your staff around, uh, the bubble over uh, her head is still there, and she's like, "Why is that there?" Oh, you know. Masami, <laughs> it is your turn. Um, Gruntrak has left the sandstorm, uh, and if you stay here, you'll start taking damage. You have three actions. What do you do? Uh, they're not going to, and they're going to attack as they do it. Um, they are going to use Dimensional Assault. Uh, now, question. Does Dimensional Assault have, uh, the Manipulate or Move action? Manipulate or Move... It's, a uh, component... It's a single component. It's just voice. You are so lucky if it had Material or Somatic, that would have been Manipulate or Focus. Literally, if it had been anything except Verbal, he would have had the chance to use an Attack of Opportunity and strike out at you. But because it's just a quick word, you say a magic word and you zoop behind him. And he's like, whoa. And you get to backstrike him. Go for it. Oh, it refreshes my Spell Strike. Thank you. It does. That is a 42. That is a crit, 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 my friend. And... Yeah, okay, roll that damage. 32 damage. All right, yeah, you do 32 damage him, and Gruntrak lets it out. Whoa! And you can see he's badly injured. One more solid blow will knock him out. You have two actions left. What do you do? All right, I was going to go for a distracting spell strike, but let's just go for a regular spell strike with Electric Arc. Hi, Belinda, how you doing? <laughs> Belinda looks at you. <laughs> As she sees it, like, <laughs> as you, like, you strike Gruntrak, you pull your sword back, and then it starts ch- sparking with electricity, and Gruntrak's, like, groaning in pain, but Belindra looks so, at you like, boom. Attack is... 31. That is still a hit. Just his AC. Holy Woo-hoo, shit. That rollback got me scared, damn. <laughs> yeah, the dice almost tilted. Yep, uh, so that's 26 damage from the sword. And then add on the electric arc. Add on the electric arc for the damage is 17, and you want to know what the funny thing about Electric Arc is? Uh-huh. It arcs to the next person closest. That would be Belindra, huh? Yes. Well, 
Okay, roll that. She has to make a fortune save, I believe? Reflex. Oh, reflex save, right. Yup. Oh shit, 24, low. No. <laughs> okay, fail. Uh, yeah, that's a fail, because my Okay, my she's going to take 17 extra damage. Yep. But Masami, as you swing your choker to a true Gruntrak, and then electricity sparks out of him into Belindra, you see Gruntrak let out, Ooh. and he topples to the floor, and he is KO! <laughs> uh, okay, and that is your turn, Masami. Well done. Uh, Masami does a flourish with their sword, and, uh, wipes off anything from, the, uh, from their sword on their sleeve. Side eyes Belinger and goes, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Back away, I swear! <laughs> have, I, have you ever considered no? <laughs> well, Belinger's fucked. Uh, <laughs> Chuji, it is your turn. You're in a sandstorm I'm that seems right. to be healing the undead, so you're fine. It's alright. I was born for this. Um, <laughs> I think it'd just be funny if Chuji punched the shit out of Rosilia. Um... <laughs> Time to do a three action one inch punch. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Chuji's like, kind of went on for size, huh? I think maybe, um. <laughs> Can I trade you my my, uh, my hero point card? Can I just give that to you? Yeah, you can use a hero point to reroll that not one. Yeah, that was a. Not great timing. Worst time to get it, yeah. That's much better. That's a 40. That's a crit. <laughs> so it's not going to have 20. Okay, cool. Tree action, one inch punch, crit. Uh-oh. Oscar will be 54 damage. Times... Oh my fucking god. Hey, Chuji, one hit, uh. he's down. The damage you did to him earlier. He doesn't have a lot of HP as the <laughs> That's fair. And then the damage, and he... Yeah, he's down. He goes... <laughs> And then he is just collapsing a pile on the floor. <laughs> Chuji's, Chuji's like uh, stepping side to side, like a, like a like one of those video game characters you play, uh, and they're like, Whew. <laughs> "That was the fast one." Okay. Um, <laughs> holy shit. Okay. That's what you. That's what a magic user gets <laughs> trying to have a fist yeah. fight with a monk. Uh, it is now going to be Raps' turn. Raps shambles over towards you all, and he groans as he's doing it, and um. The sandstorm moves with him. Oh, fuck. And oh god. So as everyone is uh, subsumed by the sandstorm once again. But that's not really the bad part. Uh, the bad part comes from the fact that he is um, breathing very heavily. And as he's doing so... Belindra says, No! Raps! You're not supposed to! And then Raps... <laughs> And he uses a breath weapon on you all. So that is going to be Breath of Sand. Uh, everyone, you're all going to need to make me a reflex save in a 120-foot oh cone. I'm not everyone. Yeah, Chuji, you're way behind uh, Raps. You were, like, fighting uh, on the other side. You're good. Love you're not even guys. in the Sandstorm anymore. Damn, 29. I rolled a 36. Okay. And Belindra, who is also caught in this, uh, also gets a success on a 37. But uh, Raps is going to do 76 negative, and slash 76 negative and 76 slashing damage to everyone. Being Masami, you take 48 damage. Belindra is going to take half of that with uh, 24. Yeah. And Sanku, you're going to also take 24. Uh, and that is his turn. He's going to take more fire damage as it eats away at him. And he takes another 19 damage. Um, Belindra's not looking well, I'll say that much. Uh, it's not Gruntrak's turn because he's down. It's not Revzilia's turn because he's down. It's Sanku's turn. Sanku? I don't like this situation, actually. Um. Okay. I think, uh, Masami yells over, uh, You might want to stop this thing in its tracks. If the sandstorm carries over towards us, they'll get the enforcers. Yeah, the enforcers are, like, on the edge of this. They, like, barely avoided the fucking uh, sandstorm <laughs> breath that, like, he threw. Um, they both seem pretty prepared for it, but also they don't... They don't want to deal with it. They just can't. Yeah, they're, like, moving. I will say, as this is happening, they're running around trying to dodge the fight. <laughs> this is different. This is less ideal. Um, I'm going to move, and then I'm going to use a spell trickster thing. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. Moving out of the sandstorm. Uh, and then I'm going to cast Fireball Scattered Fire. Okay. So tell me about Scattered Fire. Because everyone knows what Fireball does. Fireball is usually, like, a spot. It deals t uh, 66 damage in one spot. Um, scattered Fire, um, instead, uh, when I cast uh, Fireball, I can modify its area to be two different, non-overlapping 10-foot bursts. Oh, wow, so you'd be able to catch Belindra and the mummy, but not Masami. Yes. Holy shit, that's great! There you okay, go. So, Belindra and him are gonna have to roll. Uh, Belindra rolls a 28. And Raps rolls a 25. Do either of those pass? No. Roll damage as you shoot out a ball. How does this look? How does this fireball um, look? Like? I think that it's, um, I think that any of his, like, fire things, uh, or at least most of his fire things, instead of looking like regular fire, I think most of them look like fireworks. Okay. Um, you know, with, like, colors and stuff. I think most of the, his color scheme is pinks and blues. Mm hmm Um... I think that it looks like, um, God, have you ever seen a firework where somebody's, like, holding the firework and it, like, shoots out? Oh, or like a Roman uh, candle. I think it's, like, two of those, um, that, like, uh, cut off and go straight towards both of them. Okay, cool. Uh, they spiral towards them and roll damage. Let's see how you do against them, because they're both looking pretty hurt. Die. Holy shit. 40 damage to each of them? Yeah. Uh, I mean... Belindra's down, immediately. Mm hmm And, uh, Raps is gonna take 40 damage, plus an extra 15, because he's weak to fire, uh, and you can see that he is badly injured now. Raps is stumbling back, fire coursing through his sandy Raps. Uh, his whole team is down, so he's the only one left. Youch. I will say, he was a good purchase. Mm -hmm. They are <laughs> still in the running right now. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see for how long. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lolo cheers on your shoulder and says, Well done, Senku! You showed them with your spell trickster <laughs> abilities! Everybody, everybody underestimates me. Uh, Masami, it's your turn. Uh, question, how far are you from him? Fifteen. Fifteen okay. feet, should be. Well, unfortunately, you did start your turn within his, uh, aura of great despair. Cool. So, um, you need to make me a will save real fast? 34. Okay, you're fine. You are frightened, however. There's this feeling okay. inside you as you're this close to Raps where you're like, Oh, wow, I hate this. I hate everything about this. This does not make me feel good. Everything is temporary except this. This thing before me will last forever and I will not. <laughs> and you're like, whoa. Damn, okay. Anyway. Uh, so, that's just a thing that you've got at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> Belindra is down, so you don't have to worry about her anymore. Uh, Raps is looking pretty bad. Um, you are in the sandstorm. What do you do? Well, let's see. You're gonna stay inside the stand sandstorm for just a quick second. As they cast, cast into time. Oh god, okay. I need a fortitude save from this fucking mummy. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> 33. That is a save. So... He still falls into time, but takes half damage. You release a wave of temporal energy that sends creatures violently tumbling through time, scarring their thoughts with the information flowing around them. Yep, it's, uh... 5d8 mental damage and 5d6 bludgeoning. Okay, wow, okay, roll that damage for me. That is 36 damage, so he takes half of it. Okay, cool. Alright, 18 damage, cool. Uh, he is looking really bad. Uh, you see, like, uh, waves of time rippling around him, and, like, his body shifting, and he lets it, like, uh, and He's not doing gonna very get well. the hell out of dodge. <laughs> yeah, get out of the fucking sandstorm. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you leave the sandstorm, you're no longer yeah. frightened. <laughs> I think they breathe a sigh of relief and go, Okay, that <laughs> fucking sucked. Don't get close to this thing. Uh, well, Chuji, it's your turn. I'm gonna get close to it. <laughs> You know what, Chuji? I think you're the most equipped out of all of us to get close to this thing. Exactly. All right, Chuji. Uh, as you approach the mummy, you're gonna need to make a will save immediately. Okay. Uh, I can reach him in an action. 
So I will make a will save right now. 40. You don't even worry about it. It's fine. You're good. Yeah. So he doesn't... It doesn't really scare you that much. You're like, whatever, whatever, dead. I don't care. Fuck it. You rush towards mm-hmm. him. Your hands are like red hot with fire. And you are... Yeah, you're on him. What do you do? You have two actions. Uh, 2G's gonna rear back their fist and two action one ninja punch this time. Okay, uh, go for it. Damn. 42. Oh, wow. That's, That's a been... crit. <laughs> the Foundry is so fucking sorry for making me roll on that one. <laughs> okay, roll damage. That's 37 times 2. 37 times 2? That's 70 something. That's 70. F- well, I'll say one thing. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. You son <laughs> of a bitch. You motherfucker. He had 75 HP left. And I was like, fuck yes, we got this. He's still Persist- alive. Persistent fire damage. <laughs> Not persistent fire damage. Chuji's attack can still double play. on fire on a crit. Yeah, also, well, he, your attacks are fire damage in general in Stoke Flame yep. sense. Uh-huh. Which means an extra 15 damage. Which means Chuji. <laughs> Raps explodes and turns to dust. Whew. Yeah, he's fucking gone. <laughs> oh, uh. He's like fucking gone, dudes. Like the sandstorm immediately stops. All that's left was is like that... sand. Uh, that was the biggest. Like a pile of it. Was that okay? Technically, he wasn't part of their team. He was a tool. Right. I, know, I mean, I sure guess he counts as like part of the team. Uh, did yeah. the grave treader? Uh. Does it work if it's like a meta response? Like we're at the top back then? No, it doesn't. Yeah, I, no. Okay, you know what it does? You guys hear a roll of thunder while you're talking. Okay. Um, the enforcer speaks and says, Raps the mummy was not registered as a fighter. Yes! He was oh simply God. brought along as an item. I think No repercussions! I think the ethics of buying the undead are strange to me, and I'm not going to think too hard about it. Well, the yeah. ethics right now don't matter because he's dead and we won. Juji, that being said, you can tell with your monster mage senses that Raps had some very powerful magic. If you take a bandage, you might unlock some mighty spells. Uh, yeah, Juji attaches it to the belt and goes, ah, sick. Okay. You pick up a bandage and attach it to your belt and you have unlocked a gaseous form. Or at least a variant of it where you can turn into sand. You may cast it once per day. <laughs> I'm gonna have some use for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way to fuck you over so bad. Raps! No! Uh, Rosilia is getting up and he's stumbling to his feet and he looks down and says, No, not Raps being destroyed! Again! One second. And this is he, happened again? again? Wait. This is again? Again? He pulls something out of his bag of holding. It's a, uh... It's a fucking dustpan. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Are you serious? Wait. I'm a necromancer. I can just bring him back. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay. 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 I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> I was about to say, do we have to help? Do we have to help pay for that? Because that seemed like an expensive get. Oh yes, it cost a whole castle. Well. A what? <laughs> what? Oh, just it's one of the smaller ones. Don't even worry about the it. The smaller one of the, okay. ones. I. I. What is going on in oh, the country? the stock market has just been terrible uh, back home ever since the uh, the the rebellion the, against the caliphates. But that's not the point. <laughs> Your what? silver what? feather, my friends. I don't know anyone I'm talking. About. And Chuchi, do you know anything uh, about geopolitical information? I don't fucking know shit about fuck. What? I I mean, her she probably said something about that, but you know, I probably didn't pay attention to it. Not gonna lie. I love There's the another I- country I'm not gonna go to have a I love soon. the idea of this fancy Japanese man being like, and here's the ghost from fancy Transylvania on the <laughs> other side. But you know, what I know about Hiroshi, it seems very in character for him to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, regardless, you receive your sixth silver f- Oh, no. This is our- Your seventh silver yeah. feather. Guys, we're so close. Oh, I can taste it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh man! Oh, that means he's gonna hunt us down. If he finds us, it's it's fine. He has to find He'll us. More than likely, find us. Well, then we'll yeah, beat the but... shit out of him. Yeah, I'll just kick his ass. No offense about your weird uncle. Like, like what? Person. Like, like, like? Should you put up put up a hand? Okay. Up a hand. Like this. 
And he punches, and it's really bad. Ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ow, that hurt. That was smart. See? See, I can kick, I can kick ass. That's pretty good. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you don't looking at you. <laughs> Rosilia's looking at you, saying. <clears throat> oh, yeah, sorry, hi. Right, yeah, that no, feather. Don't mind, we're going to. Yeah, I gave you the oh, feather right, here. Yeah. I'm trying to give it to you. Yes. You just start talking about the politics of Ustala, which I will happily tell you about. It's no, that's very okay. interesting. That's fine. Once oh. the- <laughs> uh, I'll, t- uh, here's th- here, how about this? I'll call you if I ever go there. Ah, yes. Well, in that case, let me just write you up my address. I'm on Silver Road in Caliphus. Uh, it's 47. Here. And he writes it down. Come visit Thanks. the Grave Treaders. Anytime. Thanks. Oh. And Rosilier <laughs> starts patching up Gruntrak and Belindra. We're both fucking dare. <laughs> They're just laying there. Yeah. Uh, and so you're able to leave. Sick. Whew. Uh, how are y'all doing as you uh, re-enter Danger Island? Well, that was interesting. About what time is it now? Uh, well, you have spent uh, 14 uh, hex actions, each hex action being approximately half an hour. Um, so I think... Uh, that means that you spend seven hours, meaning that uh, if you woke up at 6 a.m., it's about 1 p.m. Okay. Making good Looking progress. Good. Senku uh, looks at the others and is like, I think we should explore now. Senku is right, my friends. We are well on our way to having enough fetters to pass. But uh, the challenges won't get any easier from here. Perhaps it would be wise for us to search for treasures and uh, secrets, which will give us a fighting op- uh, a fighting chance against the more dangerous foes. I think that's a good idea, especially because I've used all of my. I still have spell slots, but I've used all of my strongest spell slots, um, mostly because I, I just saw a good chance to. But um, so yeah. we should. We we can we can. We won't completely avoid fights, but we de- we don't need to go looking for them. Yeah, I've completely spent all of my trump cards for right now. I need to, I need to rest up on the magic a little bit. I need to pull back. I'm always good to go. You simply got excited, Masami. I cannot blame you whatsoever. Well, I know that, but at the same time, I only have so- I only have so many resources compared to Sanku. Yeah. And I only have so much damage compared to Chuji. Uh, Meg, uh, Meg, I, if memory serves, only ever have four spell slots like and you like as you yeah, get higher levels stop. you lose lower level ones you have like a few lower yes. level ones that you got from class features but like class it's a limited resource. class feats and their wizard wing their uh wizarding ring because if they lost that i think they would just be like super underpowered yeah you have a ring that gives you more spells yeah so uh <laughs> they're like yeah i just i i need to i need to learn to pull back a little bit that's fair uh hikari kind of comes up with this all right, well, we're ready to keep going. Where shall we head, adventurers? You are currently on, as she points to the map, mm. a little archipelago coming out of the side of the island. That being said, we can either head out more towards the sea and see what's over there, or head back into the island itself. <laughs> she Misami looks at Chuchi. I think we should go back inwards to land. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to go and see if we can make it up he sort of um, puts his, his finger on the map and around up north. Do you want to see if we can get up to that, to the um, to that teleporting place up front? That because or up up above or up north even. Yeah. At the very top of the island, um, there's another uh, transport tower. There is a transport tower near you mm-hmm. that you could use to get up there if you wanted. Yeah. So instead of looping around and taking literally all day, what we could probably do is just go there. Oh yeah, and then we can go and travel and we can look around and maybe go back down Mm -hmm. by foot yeah maybe okay yeah that makes sense okay all right um so you're gonna take one action to get to the transport tower and uh that is going to be uh you are now at 15 uh out of 32 so you're you're making good progress and you teleport in, and you find yourself here. Uh, you can uh, where you are now. Uh, you're kind of at. Uh, I'll probably I'll put the map on uh, our socials probably, uh, so you know people will know what we're talking about. But right now we're at the very topmost teleportation tower, 
um, kind of like in a long curve into the sea on this island. Um, there's a smaller like chain of islands uh, that uh, are kind of nearby that you could probably boat over to. Um, but otherwise, there's nothing within this hex that you're in. You are aware that usually the transport tower is the only thing within the hex. So, what now? We could go um, to West. the to the we could go to the east here this way or we could go to the west and like down the east is where the chain of islands are and the west leads back into the mainland which means east means boats if i have to be on another fucking boat very short boat rides it's like i would say maybe like a 10 minute boat ride you you are come on what if there's cool stuff what if there's treasure that you aren't getting because you're are you are you that scared? If of I you? bomb, it's gonna be all over you. Ew. I'm sitting you... behind Judy. Oh. <laughs> Get a uh, bucket. I'll I'll row the boat if it need if needs be. <laughs> all right, I guess. Yay! So despite Judy's wishes, you head east, not west. Is that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let me tell you if something happens. You die. Yeah, you die. Uh, it takes one action to move to the next place. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, something interesting happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have you have uh, spent 16, which means you're halfway through your uh, second, uh, your first day, which means that you hit an event. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want everyone to make me a perception check. All right. Secret or? Secret, yeah. Okay. So you're all walking, right? Mm-hmm. And this this part of the island is quite nice. It's very beachy. Um, it's not so much jungly like oh, the rest of the island. While we're walking, um, while we've been walking, is it okay if I was healing everybody? Uh, you would have to sit down and uh, take time to do that. Kill me. Uh, it's okay. Masami was the only one who was badly hurt, mm-hmm. and you don't want to spend more actions than you gotta. Masami's fine. As you're walking, there's a rustling from like nearby. And I think you all pause for a moment, kind of confused. I'm like, huh, what is that? And then, something Ah. jumps at it. Masami quick draws it. Uh, well, everyone really quick, I want you all to roll initiative. Like, really, really quick. Okay. Okay, that literally passes everyone, cool. Uh, so, out of fucking nowhere, (laughs) jumping out from, like, the trees near this beach, comes a massive fucking bird. I'm talking, like ostrich uh. um it looks yeah i guess the best way of s- describing it is a mix between an ostrich and a heron um uh. it's got like really like silvery gray feathers and it has uh really long eyebrows and uh as it rushes out this very obviously extremely old bird like it's got cataracts and stuff shrieks and on it is going to go first in initiative uh. it's going to rush towards you chuji and it rushes and it attacks you. And that is a 32 to hit. Oh, I didn't answer my stance. This feels metagamey if I do it. Uh, no, it's, a, it's fine. You can say you did okay. it for, for, uh, because you're stackled. Since Chuji is in their uh, crane stance, it does not hit. Okay. Well, it's going to make a second attack. That does hit. A 35. Okay. So, Chuji, this bird jumps out of nowhere. Uh, this ostrich heron screeches, warbling, and it pecks at you. <laughs> But it doesn't actually hit you. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing you know, it's running away. Huh? And you're like, that's weird. Why not happen? Feathers. Wait, Wait. Judy checks their belt. Weird fucking ting, actually. You stupid fucking you know, bird, come back here! <laughs> it seems to have taken away your feathers. Ah! It's, it's took your ruby neck, your phoenix necklace. <laughs> Judy's running. Well, I mean, I can't. Everyone... We are going to roll. We're going to go into a chase scene. <laughs> As this extremely old bird is just running the fuck away. Um, so, uh, I'm going to ru- uh, everyone's going to go in the initiative that we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say because it missed its first attack, it's only two steps ahead of you all. The way this works is that uh, you will all have to uh, 
I'm gonna roll random cards, and these will have obstacles you need to pass. Okay. Every time you succeed on a check, you will, you know, get one step closer to it, mm -hmm. right? But every time you critically fail one, you actually move back a step, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, as it's running, the first thing that you're gonna find is uh, a, a rugged cliff. Uh, this bird shrieks and it jumps and actually launches itself onto uh, one edge of the cliff to another. Uh, it jumps over basically a pretty impressive gap. Uh, so first is going to be Chuji, ironically enough. <laughs> Chuji, to uh, jump over this cliff, you're going to need to make me an athletics or survival check. That's going to be uh, athletics. It's a plus 23 instead of a plus 17. Okay. Uh, how is it 36? Okay, yeah, Chuji, you launch yourself over the cliff towards the bird, and you get one step closer to it. You're gone. And that is going to be uh, your turn. You don't have three actions in the chase. You're just running. Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, next in order is going to be Masami. Masami, athletics uh, or survival? I'll, I'll just go for athletics, I guess. That, that won't do it. 23. Okay, yeah, no, Masami, uh, you kind of stumble. You're... You get past it eventually, but not before the bird has gotten quite a bit ahead of you, you know? So it's still two steps ahead. Uh, Masami's like, if I only had my blanks, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> Sanku. Uh, oh god. Athletics? Or... How? Hmm? I was thinking about using another spell trickster thing. Uh-huh. What's the spell trickster thing? Tether red string of fate to tether <laughs> me to the thing. <laughs> So that it can't get through. <laughs> that is so insanely dumb. I love it. Uh, it's, then it can't run away. Well, it, this wouldn't even need to be Red String of Fate. This would just be Tether because that's what it's meant okay, to be used so for. Could, okay, 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 okay. So, so it could just be Tether. Thank you. How do you? What does this rope that you tie between yourself and the bird look I like? I think it looks like the kind of rope that you'd use on a ship. Okay. Um, instead of like a chain, like it, you, it looks like the kind of uh, rope that would tie oh like a ship God. to okay. the dock. So you have, yeah, I will say this lets you get past it, right? This, cool, sure. <laughs> you are being yanked along quite hard though. This thing is fast as hell. <laughs> this thing is like, oh, come on! Um, and it is back up to Chuji. Chuji, uh, you are very close to this thing. Uh, Sanku is also like being pulled after it. <laughs> Um, and Masami is running too. Uh, but then as the bird starts hopping, mm -hmm. uh, you realize that the sand here is actually very, uh, muddy. It looks like maybe this is not quicksand, but like, oh shit, no, it is quicksand. <gasps> oh my God, they warned you this would happen. Fuck. Um, we all knew that one day you'd encounter what, the quicksand. cartoons? The, car the, the cartoons <laughs> yeah. as a child? The cartoons as a child told you that you'd one day okay. encounter quicksand. Um, cartoons, Indiana okay. Jones. Yeah, all the good stuff. Uh, uh, I want you to roll me athletics or perception. And uh, if you do athletics, I will give you a plus one to your mm -hmm. roll because you do have a feat that lets you jump. Through. Yes, I literally have hopping stride. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll roll athletics. Plus one. God. The Foundry fucking the Foundry loves, loves my dick today. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 42. That's actually going to be a crit. Chuji, you launch yourself at this fucking bird, and you catch it, and the bird lets <laughs> out a shrill scream that actually nearly, like, makes the sound waves pulse through you all. It sounds almost like the veins in your body are being, like, shaken. But you have caught it, and I will say you are grappling it, uh -huh. and everyone... We're now going to enter a fight with this thing. <laughs> I like to think that the way that Chuji Just when we said we're not going for a fight. <laughs> I, I like to think that the way Chuji's like grabbing this fucking bird is that like uh, Chuji like jumped on it to grab it, but they've got it like it's like neck is between their arms and their like legs are wrapped around it and they're just both on the floor. <laughs> Dice will roll will return after these messages. Greetings, adventurers. Royari Sansarnax here, swashbuckler, sword saint, and style icon. Today I come to you with a very special message from our sponsors for this episode, the magnificent body mancers at Manscaped. Darlings, your balls will thank you when you buy their products like the Lawnmower 4.0. 
crop preserver, or even the ear and nose hair trimmer, the weed whacker. As someone who always wants to look their very best, no matter my state of dress, products like these make my life so much easier. And Manscaped really does get the job done exceptionally well. So come one, come all, use code DICEWILLROLL for 20% off, as well as free shipping at manscaped.com. That's code DICEWILLROLL, all one word. Uh, Shuji, it is your turn first. Um, mm-hmm. Senku is being pulled along by this thing, and the bird is squawking, uh, its ancient-looking feathers ruffling. And it still has the necklace in its mouth. What do you do? I fucking pull the necklace out of its mouth. Okay. Uh, make me... You can't stop me. Make me that leg roll. No, actually, make I'll me a TV check. Uh, don't ever speak to me again. The foundry said, I heard you were being very nice to me. Wow. I just want to remind you that we're enemies. I heard, I heard that, I heard that Derry made you roll something. And then you roll on that one anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Shuji, you go for it, and the bird, uh, actually is going to peck you. Yeah. So with its long heron beak, it's going to roll a fucking forty-eight. Holy shit! Are you serious? That's a crit. Well, you're then going to take. Double of 32, that's 64 damage as this bird pecks the shit out of you. And peck, 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 peck. fucking punch the shit out of this bird. Uh, you still have two actions and it is grabbed. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna flurry of blows. Okay. And I'm gonna try to stun it. Okay. 40. And 31. Both of those are hits, which means that Chuji. You are able to activate something you haven't done before, Stunning Fist, which in your books is actually more like Fight Dirty. Yes, it is. So, uh, what happens on this? Chuji just straight up sucker punches the bird. That's it. (laughs) I'm gonna punch this bird. The bird lets it squawk. Um, yeah, okay, roll damage twice, and then what happens on a Stunning Fist? Uh... Well, the damage is uh, 19 and 18. Uh, and what happens That's on 37 the damage. Place, uh, either strike hits and deals damage, the target must succeed in a fortitude save against uh, my class DC. Or be stunned one, or stunned three on a critical failure. Uh, that's gonna be a 43, I'm afraid. This thing seems to be very sturdy. I fucking hate you so much. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> is it a critical success? No, it just saves, okay. barely. So it's not stunned, and that's, you know, that's fine. It did take a shitload of damage, and you do have one action left. Oh, wait, no, never mind. That is a crit save. Well, it doesn't know it happens anyway. There's no critical success effect for it. Punch it again. 28 is a miss. Just about, I'm afraid. Sorry, bud. Fuck you. Um, okay. Next in the order is Masami. Masami, you finally caught up with them, and this bird... This fucking bird, man. Um, you got three actions. What do you do? It's got your fucking fetters. So I heard you say thief action. Um, Mazami's gonna run up to the fucking bird and flank it. <laughs> okay. Then they're gonna try to grab the feathers. <laughs> okay. Thief recheck? Yes. 35. Uh, against its reflex to see... Yep, okay, just about, Masami, you swish in, you grab the feathers, you yank it out of the bird's mouth, and it lets out a shrieking call that, again, makes the very, like, bones in your body shake. There's something weird about how this thing screams. Um, but you have the feathers, and it's not happy about it. Well, that's fine. Hey, Masami. What's up? This thing's got a fucking bag. What? Huh? It's got a bag, and it seems to be full of magic items. You can tell because you've got, uh, magic sense. <laughs> you can literally tell, can like, I, as you are looking at it, your eyes, like, glance down, and you can see, like, this bag that's glowing on I, its side, and it's glowing because it's magical. Can I swipe the bag? Like fucking... Can I swipe the bag? You know. <laughs> yeah, make me another debris check. Not 20. Oh, shit! Holy shit. Uh, yeah, Masami, <laughs> you fucking wum wum. You take the necklace from its mouth, and then look down, see the thing, and immediately, almost on instinct, you swipe the bag as well. The bird is enormously pissed. <laughs> what you gonna do now, bitch? Uh, next in the order is Sanku. Sanku, you are still... You are dragged this entire way. <laughs> Sanku, I can tell you more about that bird if you ask me for help. Please tell me about the bird. Do you want to give him an action? Yes. 
Okay. Um, so, Lolo, he's going to roll a nature check, and he is uh, very good at those. So let's see. <laughs> Tanku, it appears to be some kind of large bird. Be careful. Don't get too close. He rolled in that one. It's an <laughs> emu. I'm going to cast a spell now. He, do- he can go again if you want him to. I wouldn't be able to cast a spell. I, I, no, yeah, if but he, if he, he, when you give him one action, he gets two. Oh, oh, yeah. then yeah, he can do it again. <laughs> you tell him, tell me the truth. Yeah, okay, can you actually tell me about the bird? That's <laughs> John! <laughs> I'm Sanko, for real, Sanko, that's email. all I know! I'm gonna cast a spell now! <laughs> they fought one. wars with man before, and man lost! <laughs> Watch out, Sanko, it appears thing, to be some way. kind of ostrich. It's very obviously <laughs> not an ostrich. It's not an ostrich. <laughs> you have two actions left, thank you. You are still tied to this thing. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Uh, he's going to just cast... Um, He's just going to cast Spout, since I'm not sure what else to do right now. Okay, go for it. Reflex save. Uh, 34, that's going to be a success. It's half damage, uh, so it's 11 damage. Okay, yeah. Uh, water spews into the bird from below. Uh, and that's going to be your turn. It is its turn. The bird is looking at you, Masami. <laughs> uh, it screams, and it's going to use a warbling song. It lets out a strange, ululating cry that causes everyone, your, as it screams out, it's like... Your brains all kind of, like, go into hard drive. Like, your nerves all kind of, like, flare up. And your bodies all start to, like, strike out without you meaning to. I love being overstimulated. Um, everyone, make me a will save. See if you can suppress the weird spasms that your body are going through. Fuck you. Holy shit. Not 20. Hmm, 28. Okay. And... Judy has mastered their body. Sanku? Actually, hang on a second. I'm gonna turn in my oh, wait. card. <laughs> Oh, hero point. Fuck yeah, okay. Reroll that. You don't want to be affected by whatever this shit is. I'm telling you now. Good thing I did. 34. Crit success, thanks to resolve. 25. Okay. So, uh, Masami, for a second, because it's screaming right in your face, you are very worried that, like, you, your body is, like, spasming, but you inhale, exhale, hold your breath. You're good. You are not affected. Shuji, you're too angry to be affected. But Sanku, (laughs) as this bird sings, you are affected by the confused condition, meaning that you are flat-footed and will start attacking people randomly, because this thing is just... Oh, it's not like you are meaning to. It's just that this weird scream this thing is doing is really badly affecting you. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to rush forward and is going to try steal from you at Masami. Mm Mm-hmm. And that is a 45 to steal the ruby, uh, the phoenix feathers back. On uh, my reflex DC, right? Uh-huh. Oh my god, that is a crit. It That's fu- only 34. You know what? Fuck you, it takes both back. Boom, boom. Oh, you <laughs> motherfucker. It's got, it's got the bag, it's got the feathers, and it lets out another, like, warbling scream. <laughs> um, Chuji, it is your turn. Motherfucker. Chuji is so close to just killing this bird. And I think they will try to kill this bird. Okay. <laughs> Three action, what did you punch? Oh god, okay. Bruh. 39. <laughs> uh, because he's fucking with Daz the Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Fuck so you. he is gonna be set on fire? That's 27 times 2. 54 damage? Ooh. Yikes, okay. Um, you are not taking away my life stream, you stupid fucking ugly bird! <laughs> uh, he is on fire now as you just basically deck him so hard with your like slash that like uh, it leaves like He's this. He's not on fire. Hmm? He's not on fire. He is on fire because you have flaming runes on your fists. Oh, right. I thought that was only a No, nope, it's always. So true. He is on fire. Never mind. Uh, so that's going to be 1d6%. It's just less fire damage. Uh-huh. Uh, it's going to be 1d6 persistent fire damage as well. Um, <laughs> uh, is that your turn? Yes. Okay. Masami, it's your turn. It stole the fucking shit again. Okay. So, um... They're going to try to steal it back. <laughs> okay. 
Just going back and fucking forth with this stupid bird. Ooh, they can't steal it back. That's a nat one. As you try grab it, it just, I think it just bats its uh, beak at you again. So that's gonna be an attack as a reaction. Uh, that is gonna be a 34 to hit. Uh, that hits. Okay, well, you're gonna take 26 piercing damage as it stabs right. into your hand while you're this trying to steal it. kicking our ass. Uh. Youch. You know what? They say um, fine. Uh, quick draw Kusarigama. Okay. They're gonna try to trip this thing. Ooh! Alright, so. Okay. Uh, make me an attack roll. 31. 31 is literally its AC. But Sammy, you. You. How does this look? Tell me how this looks. Because I actually don't know a, a whole lot about Kusarigama. Uh, so what they do is instead of using the comma portion, they use uh, the weight and they swing it around they swing it around behind them then duck down to uh, catch their legs and once it locks together by the weight, they yank. Okay, so this thing lets it up and it stumbles to the floor. Um, yep. Yowch. And now if it gets up, it'll provoke an attack of opportunity <laughs> from both of you. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad I got this weapon. <laughs> Masami, uh, is that your turn? Uh, no, you have one action left, actually. Quick, is quick, quick draw a free action? No, it's a it's a. Yeah, quick draw action. lets you pull out an attack in one action. Oh. Yeah, they're going to go with, uh, they're going to hit with the comma portion now, <laughs> I think. Okay. Smack them. They don't, actually. 21. 21 is not a crit fail because he's prone. You are because very lucky. He's prone, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sanku, it's your turn. You, your body is lashing out. Okay. You are trying to be in control of yourself, but that weird song made you just, your brain go freaky. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to roll a d6, and we'll see randomly who you attack. One, two, three. So sorry. But Sanku... As you're kind of like, your oh, body is no. just attacking on its own, you accidentally go to bonk okay. Chuji over the back of the head. <laughs> will, you make, will you make me a strike? Not a spell attack, literally just smack him with your staff of healing. <laughs> oh shit, I can actually do that. Yeah, bonk him. Funny. Have you ever been more happy to roll in that one? Yeah, it's really funny. Have you ever been more happy to roll in that one, Dave? Oh shit! Uh, Senku, you accidentally bonk yourself in the head. Ow. So as you're swinging at Chuji, uh, you bang your head self in the head, Ow. and you are stunned too. Which means you lose the rest of your turn, which normally would be a terrible thing. He hurt himself in confusion. <laughs> But it actually means that you are you are no longer confused. Your turn ends. You <laughs> somehow outcuted your confusion. Oh my god, <laughs> one turn confused. He's just he's just kind of he's uh you know the 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 literal effect in Pokemon where it looks like there's like little ducks around your head. <laughs> yeah. That's Sanku right now. He knocks some Jesus. sense into himself. <laughs> I wish that happened in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Lolo looks at you and says, Sanku, are you alright? Uh... Uh, meanwhile, uh, the strange bird is going to stand up. Masami, San uh, Masami and Chuji, uh, that prompts your attack of opportunity. 39. 38. Uh, both of those are hits, roll damage. 18. 15. Okay. And with that... Uh, the, the bird is alive, but it lets out a wail, and it drops the items, and then dashes off into the woods. What? <laughs> and you have successfully fended off the strange bird. That hurt! Oh, man. You oh, fucker! Fuck. No, uh... <laughs> Drop the <laughs> items. We're fine. We're fine. They dropped it. <laughs> I think they dropped the bag, too. Yeah. Did it? Did it drop the bag? Yes, it did drop the bag. Yes! It was held in its mouth. <laughs> I'm so glad I swiped that. Worth it. Chuji Chuji coddles the uh, necklace of feathers. <laughs> Maybe you oh. might want to wear it. 
I thought I lost. I don't. I don't think that would have helped. I think that would have. Uh, the bird would have got it either way. Probably just broke the back of the <laughs> necklace. Uh, Hikari steps forward and she looks a little smug. It says, "Well, it seems you had a close encounter with a cartoon, an elder one, by the way." Uh, who now? <laughs> A cartouge. They're a rare kind of birds that have a special ability where their song allows them to control others. I... Nasty and short-tempered things. Ah, I see. That's what happened. This particular one seemed to be, I would say, centuries old. And hoarding. Whoa. Look at this. Uh, yeah, you open the back and it is full of treasure. Ooh. Holy shit. Uh, Chuji, you didn't slay the cartouge, uh, but it certainly dropped a lot of feathers in the fight. I'll give you some minor monster parts to use for crafting, but not many. You need to kill it next time, I'm afraid. I'm so fucking angry. Chuji is so fucking angry. <laughs> I'm mad about the parts. So, uh, would you like to know some of the items that are inside? Yes. A uh, weird feather. And uh, after a few moments of, like, checking it out, you can find that this thing is a Belize feather. Mm-hmm. A Belize feather is actually a trinket, a, a talisman, mm. meaning that Chuji, you can use this. <gasps> this item, mm. uh, when you deal, whenever, as a free action, when you attack someone who is uh, who is uh, wearing one of these feathers, and you've seen them do an evil act, uh, the feather catches fire, uh, and adorns you with a holy light. The creature must make a will save or have a minus two to its AC and saving throws and reduce its resistance by five until the end of your next turn. Damn. So if you see someone do something evil, this feather will fuck them up. Uh, cool. So we're going to drop that onto your sheet. Is that okay by you? Yeah. It seems like you'd be the one to take this. Yeah. Uh, there is a... Uh, as you fumble around, you find a piece of dispelling silver. Uh, and, or, <clears throat> you find a dispelling sliver, which, uh, seems to be made from a treated piece of cold iron. And, uh, when you activate it, you basically cast dispel magic at 8th level. Ooh. Eighth? Yeah, that's really high. That's strong as hell. What? <laughs> yeah. And you can actually affix it to a weapon and use it as a free action when you hit someone. <sighs> Basically, this is a I turn off your spells, fuck you thing. Mm. Who wants it? Oh. That is very you, uh, Masami, you sound like you want it. <laughs> You're making noises. <laughs> <laughs> I would very much like this, and I'd probably put it on. They would probably put it on their sword. Okay, cool. There you go. I have added it to your uh, consumables. Thank you. And you can uh, you can basically put it on your weapon. When you use it, when it's gone, it's gone, though. I will say that. Okay. That, so, for emergencies only. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, a uh, Sanku, while you're looking true, you find a little gemstone which appears to look like an eyeball. And it's an eye of apprehension. When you have it affixed to your clothes, basically it lets you roll initiative, or uh, when you roll initiative, uh, you can choose to use up this item, and you'll roll twice on initiative and take the higher result. Oh, cool. For when you really want to go first in order. There is something else here as well. Hmm. Something that looks like it could be good for you, thank you. Mm-hmm. A ring of cold resistance. Oh, yeah? Uh, basically, this greater ring of energy resistance would give you resistance 10 against cold damage. I do like that, is the issue. Hell yeah! So now you've got resistance to cold and to water, which is pretty great. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is a runestone, which after a moment of checking, Chuji, you realize, is greater flaming. Oh. <laughs> take it, take it, take it. Which is a really, really, really strong thing to have. Take it. More fire. More fire. 
Uh, well, let me tell you what it actually does, because that is extremely good. So it does more damage on a crit when you set them on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when you set people on fire now, it'll do 2d10 persistent fire damage. Hmm. Which is really fucking good. Hell yeah. Give it to me. Okay. So there you go. You've, you've gone through it and you've made some, you found some really good items. Sick. Uh, so maybe that cartridge stealing your stuff wasn't as bad as it could have been. Truji's still upset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is um, half past one now. You're halfway through your day. You actually spent eight hours up. So actually, it's two o'clock. My bad. Hmm. Yeah, you spent eight hours up. How are you all doing? Well, I think we're pretty good. Masami wants to lay down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you I'm looking at Masami right now. <laughs> do you want to heal? A little bit, a little bit. Okay. Do I wasn't expecting a fucking bird. <laughs> it's okay. I can also heal, so it's, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. You all spend an hour letting Sanku heal you up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, every, well, half an hour, my mistake. Uh, everyone, you uh, are all healed up to max HP. Sick. And uh, we find ourselves uh, 17 out of 32 hex actions. And uh, I'm putting you now back on the, the map. You could... Uh, uh, recon this place, find out what's in the area, in case there's anything interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, or you could keep moving onto the chain of islands. If, if you can find a boat at that place. If there's any more of those fucking birds around here, I definitely want to leave. Well, I mean, Hikari did say that they were rare, so... They are. I think this particular one, honestly, probably came here during the land bridge event. The... Oh. See, just for context, um, the reason that this place was abandoned was about a century ago. Uh, perhaps even longer now, actually. Earthquakes and tsunamis created a land bridge between Bunmu and the Valashmai jungle. And I think all of you just, just from being in Tiansha, know what the Valashmai jungle is. Mm hmm. It's Skull Island. Oh? oh I God. see. It's this jungle <laughs> island that is entire- Like, you think Bun Mu is bad? Uh. Oh my God. Uh, okay. In fact, it is the home of King Mogaru. There is an actual King Kong. <laughs> no, he's Godzilla, thank you. Oh. Oh, even was worse. It was King Mogaru who came from uh, the Vashmenu jungle and his battle against the Void Duke, another kaiju, that actually led to this island being abandoned. The two kaijus <sighs> duel, along with all the uh, attacking monsters that came f over the land bridge, led to Bun Moon no longer being hospitable. So I would reckon that the elder Kautuji met was from that original incursion. <clears throat> Just imagine, that thing could have seen D King Mogaru. Isn't that exciting? I guess. He's just here looting people? Damn. Well, in fairness, they mostly left. Like, they, they've... The people who, uh, who once lived here have long since passed. I know, but looting people is in, like, the... the, the, the tournament. The... <laughs> It is There's a it possibility is. that that thing has uh, encountered others. Possibly. I didn't see any scarring or any other feathers, so maybe not. It could also have just been grabbing uh, items that it found. Certain true. birds like to collect trinkets. It's Fair. True. I guess. <laughs> so, what do you guys do? It'd be a recon action to check... It would be one ac hex action to uh, recon this he uh, entire hex. Or you could go somewhere else. Do we want to check the place out? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Okay. Okay, you're all going to spend a recon action uh, investigating? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, so, 
Uh, so first things first, you do find a dock. Um, and that dock is uh, where you will be able to travel to the chain of islands nearby, which is very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, however, you also find a stone market if you wanted to go in. Ah. One of these shits again. <laughs> oh, aren't they so cool? They are pretty sick. Um, and you can actually see another team's base on the other side. Oh. Hmm. What does it look on, like? Like, it, like uh, the base appears to be from where you, what you can see, a temple, another temple. Hmm. Except from here, you can actually recognize it very easily, Masami, as a temple of Tsukiyo. Huh? <laughs> Your god, the god of the moon. Oh. And our international sexy boy. <laughs> Seriously, do yourself a favor, look up Tsukiyo. T-S-U-K-I-Y-O. <laughs> sexy boy supreme. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh my god. <laughs> He's so sexy, I'm gonna cry. Anyway, point is... <laughs> You have to look- Oh, God! Don't look that up! It's all furry porn! You have to look up Tsukiyo Pathfinder! You have to look up Tsukiyo Pathfinder! It's all furry porn! (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Anyway! Anyhow. (laughs) Anyhow. There's a temple and there's another team, but it's across the water. Can we see the team? No, you don't see the team. Fuck. Okay. Well, the team could be out by now, or they could be inside. That is a temple of Tsukiya, though. I... Uh, are you guys good to fight? Nah, nah, <laughs> I mean, I'm always good to go, but you guys have, like, spell slots. <laughs> yeah, and I, ex- I, like I said, I expended a lot of my, uh, trump cards. I mean, hey, we have seven feathers for the first day. Yeah. Pretty what good. we could probably do then is go around and then come back later if we need the feather. Oh uh, yeah, we know where they are. True. And Lolo um, nods his head. And anyway, we could just say hello. It doesn't always have to be fights. We can. We are within our rights to reject the challenge, aren't we? No. Oh, yeah. And, um, Wait, no. Yeah, we literally <laughs> are. We can just say okay. hello. <laughs> Rules wise, oh. yes, we are. We have Chuji with us. <laughs> The, the, Sorry, it's against my moral code personally to, to say no to a fight. moral code. That is true. <laughs> I, li- I like that your moral code literally involves that like, if I if I if I genuinely ask you to fight me, you'd have to. I'm not. I'm not asking you to fight me. I'm not. Better not. Don't. I won't, even <laughs> though I really wanna. <laughs> it's also against my god, so. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Somewhere, the monkey laughter of Sun Wukong echoes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sounds just Shuji, If Shuji re- listened real close, they could hear it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lolo nods and says, Even then, it's not like we're unable to fight. Both Masami and Sanku have very powerful cantrips. Even though we, even though we may be running low on our spell slots already after this rigorous few hours, we'll definitely be able to make it through the rest of the day. Even if we do have to do a few more fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only thing Can't that's I... gimping, the only thing that's gimping me right now is the fact that I don't have my teleports. But that's it. All I have to do is refocus for at least one. <laughs> yeah, I t- you've definitely got your uh, focus points back by now. Yeah, I will say <laughs> my singular focus point. <laughs> Yeah, you're one focus point, yes. <sighs> Love being amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to pick up more. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I just need the feats for it. Yeah. Either way, uh, do you want to cross over? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you cross over, and as you are crossing, uh, let's see if anyone's home. Okay, so you see them leave. Oh. But they don't pass you. You don't get to see them. Damn. Because flying out of the temple is a giant celestial rock. Whoa! What? And it calls loudly 
as it flies towards the island itself. Like the the actual big island? Yeah, the mainland. It is passing it by all of you. It is going for more fights. Which several people on its back by the looks of it. Whoa. It's just Whoa, a rock. Can you get that big? <laughs> Not a rock like a stone, a rock like the giant bird that, that you... This particular one that you've been obsessing over, Chuji, since you saw it on the beach. <gasps> That's the bird! Do you want to follow it? Oh, it's gone. Yeah. It is, like, it is... Yes. It has flown over the sea back into the mainland. We have to come back tomorrow to fight it. I need to fuck up that bird. Okay. Sure thing. Uh, all I'm, right. I'm pretty sure, actually, we're, like, really close. Our, our base is really close to one, isn't it? Like, one of the teleport stones? Yeah. Yes. Then, yours is actually wonderfully strategically paced. Then when we wake up tomorrow, we can immediately go and bug him. Do you wanna? That's true. Hell yeah. <laughs> we'll just mark the place on the map, and then we'll Besides, come back. If, I, if we're gonna fight, if we're gonna fight something that you're excited about, I want everybody to be ready, like, perfectly ready for it. Yeah, I want to go at at the very least a little whole hog on this team. It seems like they have a lot of people. I like those odds. I like their big rock bird. Uh, so there's nothing else in this hex. You can keep moving, though. Mm-hmm. All right. How many hex? How many uh, hex actions do we have left today? Uh, less than half, but you've got like I think fourteen. Okay. So you've got a fair few. You don't have to worry about getting home in time either. Uh, like, when you run out of hexes, you say, okay, and now we head home. Oh. You don't have to, like, worry about that. Oh, okay. Then I think I think we can go further like this. Uh, deeper onto the yeah. first island on the chain? Yeah. The largest by quite some number, but yeah. Um, okay, let me... Okay, you spend an action going... And do you want to spend an action reconning? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Well, that's wonderful, because you've hit another event. Oh, great. If it's another fucking animal... <laughs> I'm, that's it, I'm ending it Might all. Be. <laughs> you find a schoolhouse. Oh. And you see something that is happening... That clearly, I t- I think it's actually a shock for you to see. Hmm. Yes. Because it's touched the stars. Oh. What? And they're in the middle of fighting another team. <gasps> oh. Oh. Oh my God! Do you want to watch? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> get it. Find a bush. Find a tree. Go, 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 go. I I think they get into a bush and their their heads like pop out like in like in a shitty anime <laughs> where it's like them on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the fight is going seems to be going well at the very least. Mm-hmm. For who? Well, let's actually get into that. <laughs> so we see uh, Jelly who um, is, I'll remind you, an Oozmorph uh, Technomancer, uh, Somsu of No Clan, who is a Kasata Gunslinger, and Trion, who is an Android Idol, and also an Operative, but that's not the point. Uh, and I think you are surprised to see Ozzy is fighting. Oh. They actually got Ozzy to fight? Wow. That must be yeah. serious. Uh, uh, you see, then, the other team. Uh, they are a team of four. Uh, the first person you see is by far the most striking. Um, she is a, uh, Tian woman. Uh, and she has, uh, perfectly white hair. Uh, very long and, uh, very luscious, I guess. It's really beautiful white hair. Um, she has purple robes. Um, and a, a giant mot is floating around her. Next to her is a human, another Tian, uh, who uh, is wearing like a lot of dark clothes and like a flowing robe, and uh, they're throwing daggers as they fight. Um, standing in the back and casting spells is a hobgoblin. 
uh, which basically looks like a regular goblin, you know, with like a big goofy football head, red eyes. Uh, but this one is very tall and gangly, rather than, you know, short like most goblins. Uh, and it, they're wearing all black, um, with a long, like a wide brimmed hat. They almost look like a black mage, you know? Yeah. I'm interested. <laughs> And then lastly is a really big buff guy um, with blue skin. Uh, This guy is bald, uh, very clearly a monk. Um, You know the bad guy from Promare? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, The big buff dude? He looks like that if he was a monk and also had blue skin. (laughs) Huh. Um, He's a big, big dude, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's seen, he's, they're smiling. Um, as they're all fighting, I want you all to make me a quick perception check. Okay. Okay. I think all of you notice it. Touch the stars is completely outclassed. Like, completely. Oh no. And the fact that Ozzy is fighting is oh. wild to you all. Oh shit. Um mm-hmm. As they're as they're kind of uh, brawling it out, uh, you see that woman with the white hair. Uh, her her hair tangles and uh, grabs at Trion's neck and it actually like forms into a hand around her neck. And then it spikes her onto the floor. And she kind of, like, raises up and begins Uh, casting a spell down on Trion, who, like, rolls out of the way just in the nick of time because, like, a blast of magic scorches where she was just moments ago. That is a witch. That's a witch. (laughs) Jelly, or Gelly, uh, our Uzmore friend, is uh, battling off against uh, the uh, black-robed woman who is throwing a shuriken at her. And uh, as she stumbles, a uh, shuriken digging into her, the black-robed woman launches herself towards uh, Gelly and then, like, poke, 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 several pressure points, and Jelly explodes. Oh, shit. Uh, um, you see oh, uh, Samsu of No Clan is uh, uh. facing off against that uh, hobgoblin uh, with the mage's robes. And, uh... As he's shooting, um, the hobgoblin raises a hand and, like, punches the bullet out of the air, basically. And then smashes their staff into the ground. And then skeletal hands crawl up from beneath them and pull Sunsu into the floor and smash his head onto the ground. Oh. Ozzy is battling against that monk dude. And uh, Ozzy is, like, taking these punches. But you can see his armor is denting as... Um, the, the monk is pow, 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 pow. And you can see that, holy shit, the force that this guy's fighting at is enough to literally warp the metal that Ozzy is made of. And the entire time that man is just grinning, almost like he's sharing like a nice afternoon tea. And Ozzy just stumbles backwards and collapses onto the floor. And Trion exhales and Shirley gets up and says, Okay, I think we're done. Touch the stars, surrender. And then she gets punched in the face. Like that that white haired woman punches her uh, in the face. Not with her, ha- with her hair fist, hey, the ones that she was forming into magic fist. She just decks her across the face with her bare hand. Uh, Trion collapses onto the floor. That's so rude. Masami is like three seconds from standing up. And they are killed. And uh, all four of these people kind of stretch up a little bit and uh, crack their backs. And um, the white-haired woman turns to uh, her team and says, That wasn't too difficult. Shall we continue? And uh, I think um, the hobgoblin chuckles and says, well, yes, they were a fun distraction, but we've got better things to do, I think. 
um, the monk cracks his knuckles and says, Really was pretty fun, though. Uh, do you have big one went down? I thought he would take me another few punches at least. The black robed woman says, Check their pockets. They might have something of value to us. And uh, the moth flutters. And it looks directly at you. And then, so does the white haired woman. She just smiles at you all. Uh, and she uh, uh, says, Friends, it looks like we have some peeping toms. Uh, sorry, we saw a cool fight happen. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, she takes a step forward and looks at you all and says, mm, You're a witch, aren't you? Uh, yep. Yeah. Is that your familiar? She says, looking down at Lolo. Yeah. Hmm. You got a long way to go. A long way to go. I <laughs> and uh, the big, uh, the big monk kind of rumbles forward and grins and like slaps your shoulder, Chuji, and smiles. Says, "Well done, little man. Did you like the fight?" <laughs> it was kind of sick. Thank you. I very much so agree. Hell yeah. High five? He does not. He just smiles. Is Um. He just smiles wider at you. Um, the black robed lady comes forward and says, Only two? She's looking directly at you, Masami. Pardon? Only two. What, the comma? No, the tails. Um. I was under the impression that Kitsune grew in strength and grew more tails. Isn't two the of minimum? The, of the ones I want. <laughs> That's a fun one. I've never heard that one before. She smiles, and there's something almost a little malicious about that smile. And uh, the uh, the hobgoblin calls us. We're wasting time. We should be heading back home. And uh, the white-haired woman smiles. Says, "No, no. We may as well make our introductions. My name is Su Takmoi, and she bows her head. I'm the leader of the Light Keepers. This is Hui Ying. She points at the black road woman. Uh, my lead poisoner and uh, expert in uh, tactical combat." Uh, she points then at the Hobgoblin. Uh, this is uh, Azkanak the Exiled, Necromancer. Uh, and she then waves over at the monk, who still got his hand on your shoulder, Chuji, for a little bit too long. <laughs> and this is uh, Diki Sonam. Yeah, this is Diki Sonam. And he grins his pleasure's all mine. He is blue skinned um, and with like almost glowing white eyes. Do you guys want to make a quick society roll? Because you know what a hobgoblin is. You, the other two are humans. You don't know what a uh, friend Sonam is. Yeah, sure. You all know what this guy is. You know that he is a Samsaran. Uh, oh! The Samsarans are a fascinating uh, people who, when they die, immediately reincarnate. Reincarnate, yeah. Um, and they will always oh. retain their memories. Mm -hmm. So even the That's young, really like a newborn Samsaran, will remember centuries upon centuries of past lives. They won't be the same person, but like, they will remember what it was to be these other people. Are they born to, like? Yes, they, they are their own like people. human parents. They are their, no, they're or... their own people. They don't. They're not like oh, okay, uh, half, okay. uh, like um, they're not like born to humans or anything. They are their own. People. Oh. Okay, interesting. Um, and uh, as uh, the light keepers all kind of like bow in, uh, like saying hi, uh, Suta Knoa says. Well, you can have this. She pulls out a silver feather. Oh, okay. This was the last one that this team had. Uh, so they are hereby disqualified, right? And uh, their enforcer looks a little glum and nods. Oh. We don't need it. Thanks. 
No? How many do you have? Oh, we already have ten. Oh. It's impressive. You were... If it's true. Uh, I, I think it's definitely Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, Hui, Hui Yin <laughs> smiles and like just flourishes a full phoenix necklace. Ooh. And uh, she smiles and says, It's not that hard if you're good. I guess not. Well, thanks for the eighth. And uh, Chuji takes it. Um, I think uh, she smiles. Uh, and Sue Takuma kind of like bows her head and says, Well, good luck. And uh, she starts to leave. And as she's leaving, you can see that Hu Ying has taken one of uh, Sumsu's laser pistols. Oh no! And the three of them uh, disappear into the undergrowth. Masami, imme- Masami immediately turns to Hikari like, they are you- you're serious, they can't do that, can they? It is not disqualified in the rules to take items from others. Is it disqualified in the rules to give a feather back to them? There's no rule against it. I don't feel right just taking a feather from them like that. But, unfortunately, they are hereby disqualified. I am an enforcer, and I witnessed them losing theirs. And if they have zero, that's it. it. There's no coming back from that. No coming back, I'm afraid. No. I mean, sweet Trudy checks okay. to make sure that they're all locked out. Yeah, yeah no, they um, are. They are like they're all KO. So, I, I, yeah, hey, that like sucked and everything, but like they were gonna lose it anyways. That's it's fine, but I didn't feel wrong doing nothing. So, Lolo looks at his throat a little bit and says, well, "Why would they fight them? Because they're assholes. They took they took the they took their last." Uh, feather when they didn't need it anyways and they stole this guy they stole his laser pistol which is sick which was a sick as hell weapon they're just doing it to be assholes he's st- th- that guy kept his hand on your shoulder for like a threateningly long time yeah and that and that <laughs> witch was being really mean I don't like her you see that Lolo bites his lower lip a little bit. He looks cranky. You're, very, you're plenty powerful, Lolo. Don't worry. I know I'm plenty powerful, but I can't I think she was doing with her hair. That was really cool. <laughs> can't you move your, like, yeah, mustache? But... Sanku, I've decided. <laughs> we'll teach you how to do that. I have short hair. I can make it grow <laughs> longer with magic. Or perhaps oh, I can make Oh, please don't. You... I cut it. I can make... I cut it on purpose. Ah, if you're looking for a more masculine look, I can have you sprout a mustache, which will grow into powerful I... magic fists. Ugh. Um. <laughs> That's kind of no, fucking I gross, think man. I, I think I... I'd look gro- I would look so weird with the mustache. I don't <laughs> think that fits Senku's aesthetic. Lolo, do you do you do you see this boy? Do you see him? Do you see He's him? He's got a baby face. <laughs> as as Masami like. Pinches um, Sanku's like both of their cheeks in one hand and go. Do you see this face? And he makes see a squeaky toy noise. A, a mustache growing here. I could make it grow. If only or to at be the very the least, same. staying here. I, I don't want some other patron outshining me. You can. Yeah, but okay. Uh, I mean, hey, that moth couldn't talk. True. Maybe it just yeah. wants to talk. Lolo. Yeah, he, they're, they're losers. Lolo, I'm going to pass on to you some wisdom now from Hiroshi. Just because you don't have the same skills as another familiar, that does not mean that they are outclassing you. I'm less worried about the familiar. I'm more worried about the patron. Um, oh my gosh, I forgot that not everybody's patron is also the familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty but normal if, for their patron if, not to be their familiar. Yeah, that's but true. if their patron is really strong and can make her hair turn into fists, what am I doing? Oh. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> well, I think 
think it's time to chill out for a second. Um, and Senku, Senku uh, walks over to uh, the very knocked out team on the floor and nudges nudges them a little bit and is like, excuse me. Um, excuse me. <laughs> He's like poking one of them in the who, shoulder. Who are you going for? <laughs> um, oh god. Uh, what? what, what d- <laughs> I don't remember their names off the top you of my head. You can just describe the person and I'll tell, give you a name. Um, the, the, the goop, the goop. The uh, Gelly? Gelly, yeah, yeah. Gelly, he's poking the... Gelly slowly reforms, and she lets that a... <laughs> oh, is the fight over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow. I'm sorry. Uh, Masami goes over to Threon and kind of shakes them awake like, hey... You good? Uh, uh. Ow! Oh, that hurt. Looks like it. You okay? She did she punch me? Right yeah, before, yeah. right before you even finish the word surrender. Yeah. You only got uh. like one syllable into it. That's like s- super rude on this planet, right? Yeah, I, I think it would be rude on yes. any planet. It, it it is rude, but that doesn't stop some people. It's not against the rules to be a dickhead. Yeah, yeah, they were just rude. Ozzy kind of stumbles up to his feet, and he's clearly quite battered, and he lets out a buzzing. <laughs> I was prompted into self-defense. That never happens. And, um, Gelly kind of, like, puts her hand on his, uh, side, like, Hey, Ozzy, come on. Let's, let's, uh, lie you down, okay? You're gonna need some serious repairs after the beating he gave you. And Ozzy lets it go. As he kind of clamors down after her. Uh, Samsu kind of, like, gets up and looks around and says, They came at us. In our temple, and uh, we didn't want to fight, but they were mighty pushy. Especially when they found out we had a fetter. Oh, they must have been desperate for that thing. They were. It was like they were uh. salivating at the mouth. <laughs> Shirji grimaces. Suppose the best team won in the end, and I wish them good luck in the rest of the tournament. Uh, say, you uh, you want to see my my pistol? Hey. <laughs> they took it. The one in the black robes took it. Shrion, yeah. their eyes widen. They're like, that can't be right. Can we do anything about that? And the enforcer shrugs and says, there are no rules against looting your opponents, I'm afraid. Well, if we ever fight them, maybe later in the turn. Wait, oh, wait, okay. <laughs> Senka raises his hand like he's in a fucking classroom. Um, <laughs> And Lola says, yes, Sanku. I... Okay, this is more a question for the enforcers. Oh, you didn't say. Lola, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, I know, I just raised my hand. Um, so, the tournament... I mean, if we did fight them now, we'd also we'd still be able to loot them back. But in if we fought them later in the tournament, too, is looting allowed? Um, I think uh, Hikari cocks her head a little bit and says, I'm not entirely sure, but certainly I don't think these people would be against putting up to a gamble. That's true. We could all, we could always make a bet. That being said, don't yeah. count on it. Just because they have ten footers now doesn't mean they're going to survive the rest of the three days. Although That's fair. Although how they were able to get ten footers so quickly is beyond me. If... Well, they seemed really powerful. That, and if they were... If they were gathering feathers with the same ferocity as getting this one in, and they say this to Hikari, like, with their eyes telling them, telling her exactly what they mean, given their situation, I think it's safe to say that they're just looking for fights. They seemed kind of malicious when they were just talking to us. Like, they 
think that they're genuinely like better not just like better at fighting like the way that Chiji is like the greatest at fighting ever but like better people like inherently that's what it felt like kind of sounds like they've just never been beaten yet well then I suppose we'll just have to show them the what for if we come across them later <laughs> oh, God, exactly that's, so that's true <laughs> thank you Lola uh Trion is smiling as they stand up and they look almost a little sad and they're like well uh oh that's it for touch the stars um, um we're gonna you guys are head, you guess. guys are injured um we're not injured right now but I really felt bad just leaving you alone um I have a spell that could heal you which I know you don't like need it for fighting but being in pain still hurts and I think it mm-hmm. um it's called Soothing Spring. It makes like it makes like a hot springs. Oh. What's a hot spring? Uh <laughs> um <laughs> it's like a hot bath, but it's natural. They oh. they're common in like the mountains and stuff. I think Samsu shakes his head a little bit and says You you uh Galari you uh, cagelings and your Obsession with water. Cage lakes? Water, no. Yeah, you're from the cage. The cage? What? There's a giant spider oh, entombed in the middle oh, of this planet. Oh, that guy. Oh, I for- okay. I like to forget about him. That makes sense. <laughs> people who are not people who are not used to Galarian lore are fucking going like, wait, there's a what? <laughs> I, I like to forget about Robogug. I, I think a lot of people uh, like so, forgetting about that. I love it. You're so, so scary. Sanku, uh, do you want to spend a uh, exploration action to heal up everyone and uh, you know say goodbye to touch the stars? Yeah, yeah, I think I would like to do that. I really like this team, and I feel bad. Yeah, yeah. You guys share a bath with them. Ozzy is repaired on the sidelines by Chuji, who is uh, drinking some healing potion or something. Yeah, or just. I don't even know if Chuji needs them at the moment. Not really. Yeah, I th- no, I think Chuji's okay. Um, the afternoon is slowly coming to slip by, but certainly you've learned after your encounter with the Light Keepers that there are some strong, strong people on this island. And if you want to win, you're going to have to get strong too. This episode of Dice Will Roll would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. GP Dora, Lemon Jam Tart, Marshmallow Berry, Sarissa, Ferric Falcon, Luis Loza, Fawn Sims, Alexander Criswell, Mae Cohen, Skyly, Blurst Hellion, Kendra West, Ren, Genuinely Tricked, Transgirl Trish, Zurenwal, Baal Punyon, Johnny the Catman, Matthew Wilson Krasnovich, Killen Shark, Fearin, Glitch HD, Jay Snooks, Zenith Drums, Josh Heatcoat, Torbjorn, Introduction, Sophia Valera, G Barbera, Luke, Gideon, Sarah B, Seth, Ravona Darklo, Dolores, Kira, Litcherlope, Gizmo, Matthew, Cass, Fable McElduff, Ava, Ram T. Bright, Lonesome Chunk, Steph, Sean C., Natasha Lumley, Ellie, Jenna Mitchell, Kane Kendrick, 
Triceratops, Reikitsune, Anna Maria, Roxy, Jordan, Cynical Spinstress, Emlyn Moderna, Jum the Bookworm, SS66 Seeker, and Dame Valerie Turb. Special thanks to today's special guests Trion by Kira, Gelly by Transgirl Trish, Some Soup No Clan by Sean C, Ozzy by Rhiannon C, Tanizaki Hikari by Anna Maria, Azkanak the Exile by Mei Cohen, Hui Ying by Genuinely Tricked, and Diki Sonan by Skyly. If you'd like to see what you can get for helping us keep it rolling, check out patreon.com slash dice roll.